welcome to in 5 minutes the agenda of this clip is to understand the drawbacks of scaling in the previous clip we have seen the effect of full scaling and partial scaling on the device characteristics here is a quick review we have seen that due to full scaling my oxide capacitance increases by a factor of s my drain current reduces by a factor of s my power dissipation reduces by a factor of s square which was one of the major advantages of full scaling and my power density remains the same we also saw some of the other terms like frequency delay current density so on and so forth we also saw that the effect of constant voltage scaling on the device characteristics was a bit different and the oxide capacitance here as well increased by a factor of s my drain current increased by a factor of s whereas in constant field scaling it was reduced by a factor of s power dissipation increases by a factor of s which is again one of the problems and power density is increased by a factor of s q now if you see certain parameters had varied in different directions in constant field scaling and in constant voltage scaling but we also know that due to the use of level shifters and voltage translator circuit we would not be preferring constant field scaling or full scaling and hence we go ahead and use partial scaling now the question might arise is how far can we scale these devices we have already seen that we can go and reduce the device size in different dimensions or in different directions by a factor of s but the effect is very very evident just an example in constant voltage scaling my power density increases by a factor of s q so is my current density now this leads to some of the problems like electro migration which we have already been discussing in the few previous clips now let's see some of the major drawbacks that take place due to scaling the first drawback which we will try to understand here is gate tunneling now we have already seen that in both the types of scaling i am trying to reduce my thickness oxide by a factor of s now when the thickness oxide is reduced by a factor of s according to quantum mechanics there is a finite probability that the electrons or the carriers which are present in the substrate or in the channel or in the surface just below the sio2 layer the carriers will tunnel through the oxide means they will pass through the oxide and lead to a leakage current in the gate in very simple language as the thickness oxide is reduced the carriers present in the substrate will cross the sio2 layer or will tunnel through the sio2 layer and will reach the gate leading to a leakage current this is nothing but gate tunneling the probability of gate tunneling drops off exponentially with the increase in thickness oxide so this is one of the major drawbacks as we keep on reducing the thickness oxide the phenomena called as gate tunneling keeps on happening okay let's go ahead and see another phenomena oxide breakdown or dielectric stress now let's understand a common example first if an insulator like silicon dioxide sio2 is facing a high electric field across it it can break down it can cause reliability issues the circuit can also fail or it might lead to a very high current as well just a common analogy we also know that air is an insulator and it can conduct a very high current when lightning takes place so in very simple words if a high electric field is put across an insulator it may lead to the breakdown of the insulator or in simple words it may lead to the breakdown of the device which can also cause some huge currents now let's see what happens in constant voltage scaling we know that e vertical is given by vgs by tux we have already seen this in one of the previous clips now in constant voltage scaling we don't scale the voltage but we reduce the thickness oxide so that means my e vertical increases now as we keep on increasing or in simple words if we keep on reducing tux e vertical will keep on increasing and there will be a large electric field across the silicon dioxide layer and if this field is larger than the breakdown field the silicon dioxide may sustain permanent damage during operation leading to a device failure this is nothing but excess stress on the dielectric or the sio2 layer so it's also called dielectric stress or because of which the oxide breaks down so it's also known as oxide breakdown so this is another drawback of scaling let's go ahead electro migration 
Now this is the major drawback of constant voltage scaling as well. In constant voltage scaling we saw that the power dissipation was increased but more than that the power density was increased by a factor of SQ. So was my current density which also was increased by a factor of SQ. What does this mean? This means that there is a huge amount of current in the same area where the current was flowing initially. Due to scaling the current density or the power density is increased. Now what happens is high current densities lead to electron wind. A huge amount of electrons are flowing in the small area. High current densities lead to electron wind that causes metal atoms to migrate over time. In simple words, because of the high electron wind, it causes the wear out of the metal and it forms voids. So now no longer this metal are of use to us. And this phenomena is seen more in aluminum wires than in copper wires. So because of high electron wind, metal atoms migrate. So it's called electro migration. This is another drawback which takes place due to scaling. In the further clips, we'll see some of the other drawbacks as well. Hope you understood. Stay tuned. Thank you.